All right. Again, let me introduce my friend Tammy, who has been a delight. We've been neighbors with Tammy for many years, and uh, we walk by her place and we see her and Dale. But also, um, we're so thankful for her leadership with our board. She's been a member of our board for a while. She is the chair of our board now. Um, she brings so much joy and encouragement to each of us and uh, leads with so much humility as well, which we <coughs> so appreciate that she has stepped into this role for such a time as this, knowing that, uh, and having affirmed within our community that this is God's calling for her and uh, depending on him. And uh, again, it's, it's a joy to serve alongside of you. Thanks. So Adam just said everything. So the end, thanks. <laughs> thanks for having me here. It's time for me to go. Um, on, this was a long time sitting. Do you need five minutes to just stand and do some jiggling? Are we OK? Okay. <laughs> I, I'm lucky I get to stand. Okay, no, I'm not fancy. I don't have the slides. Yeah. There. We're <laughs> done. I heard a story from a, uh, someone yesterday. You're saying you were actually. You guys know Joan, Joan um, Blackwood. Blackwood, who comes to Kitchener site. I was talking to her yesterday, and she was saying she was, she, they had you know, a party at her house on the long weekend. A bunch of people came from Toronto to visit her, and they played a game, and, and they were all running across her yard, and one of her friends was joking because she said, you know, she's running across the yard, but she said she's at a point in her life where not all of her body stops running at the same time. <laughs> so. <laughs> Some parts take a little longer to slow down. <laughs> so thank you for having me here today. This was, I actually initiated this with Garrett. I came to him a few months ago. Uh, on the board, so I, I'm on the communications committee, and the communications committee were in charge of running the AGM, the annual general meeting, which, you know, snore. Um, it can be a bit of a snore, but we wanted to this year be a little bit more engaging, a little bit more interactive, a little bit more communicative. Uh, and uh, so, so far this year, earlier, I think it was November, I hung out with the young adults. They failed to tell me that this was the cool group. <laughs> Those kids, I thought they would be the cool ones. You guys are the cool ones. Uh, so this is the second. I'm just calling it a little bit of a road show. Just, and I want this to be interactive. I don't have slides. I want this to be a conversation. So please feel free. Like, don't wait till the end for questions. If something pops into your head, scream it out. Throw up your hand. Whatever works for the cool kids. Um, I also, um, I'm a little bit distracted today. I'm very excited because my 27 year old son is flying into Toronto today. I have to go get him. So I'm not going to be staying, unfortunately, for lunch with you. And just to make sure that doesn't happen, I brought my sleeves that don't allow me to eat lunch. <laughs> I can't, I can't. I might stuff a bonnet on my way out, but I won't. Unfortunately, there's a lot going on today. So. I'm super excited. So yes, I have a 27-year-old son and a 22-year-old daughter. Oh, we've been at WMD for over 20 years. Jude, I, I recognize you now, but I thought I've never met you. And you've both been at WMD for this long. And this is for sure the first time we've spoken. Well, maybe not for sure. I shouldn't say that. But we don't know each other that well. And that's that's just, that's the nature of how WMB has gone. I mean, I've, I've met a ton of you, um, but it is a big church, and we tend to kind of stay in our bubbles of the people that we know, right? right? Um, so this is just my opportunity to say hi, to let you know who I am, to let you know about the board. What is this board thing anyway? Um, and what does all this mean? So thank you again for letting me be here. Let me just open, I'm just going to open my little session, just five seconds of prayer and we'll get going. Dear God, thank you for this opportunity. Thank you for that we are in fellowship together. What a blessing this is to spend time in your presence. 
uh, as we sing together and eat together and drink together and just uh, be your family in this place. So thank you for today. God is in all that we do in Jesus' name. Amen. If um, I would have never, ever, 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 and if I want to say it again, ever <laughs> expected that I would be standing in front of you in this role, yeah, that was never going to happen. I can, as Nikki has, has said, it, you kind of, you, you, you do things because God puts you in place, but never would you have ever, never would she have ever moved to Ontario. <laughs> Why? Never would I have I ever um, been in this position of this church. We're all on a spiritual journey that never ends. And we never reach that pinnacle. And I am very much that. I am very much, just because I hold this weird position, um, it doesn't mean I'm there. And I have figured it out. I am far from it. Um, I grew up in a, a Christian home, but it was a little squidgy around the edges. I loved the Kenny Rogers bit. Yeah. That was my dad. My dad would sing that song. He would have been in his mid-30s when that song came out. Yeah. <laughs> he would walk around the house singing that song. That was so good. Thank you, Judy. Um, I did grow up in a Christian home, but it wasn't, it wasn't an overwhelmingly Christian home. My parents did split up when I was 15. Um, uh, won't go into all that stuff. Um, I ended up in this city. I, I didn't grow up here. I, I grew up so, a little southwest of here. Uh, but I ended up in the city for school. So I came here to go to Laurier and uh, stuck around. Uh, I didn't, I wasn't interested in going back home. So I, I landed here at 18 and, and, and didn't leave. And God called me to stay here for whatever reason. <coughs> uh, so as far as this whole board thing, um, I, <laughs> I, I've been involved in WMB. I, I grew up, I should say, I've got a bit of a, a messy church background. So I was baptized as a United Church as a baby. We did the United Church thing. And then we went, my dad was born in Holland. We went to a free reformed church, the hats, the old hats, um, for my, uh, as a youngster. And then we moved to a Baptist church as a youth. And then I came to this city, met my husband, whose family was Lutheran, so we did the Lutheran thing. <laughs> um, but I, I'm a hodgepodge. I'm a salad. This really what I am. Um, my dad's Dutch and, and, and Spanish, and my mom was English, Irish, and I'm a, I'm a salad. I'm a true salad. So I don't have the true Mennonite background which is unique for to sit on this board and in the position that I'm in. I'm not, I didn't grow up as this Anabaptist. I don't have the cultural history myself. And that was said to me soon after um, I was asked to take on this role that this is unique for this church. But I don't run the church, you guys. I, I'm one of you, and I said this to the young, young adults too, I'm literally just one of you. I just found myself in a position where God said, here now. And I said, okay. Um, so my background at WMB, so um, my husband and I were at Lutheran Church. We had our, our son at the time was very, very young. And we came to WMB Church because there was this <coughs> event happening. And so we came and they were, oh yeah, there's the event, that's cool. But I remember <laughs> a couple of things about that first time here. Um, there was a wedding taking place on the Sunday that we were here. Our very first Sunday, there was a wedding. We're like, what? Like, what now? And we were, I was like, that's kind of cool. Like, if you're going to have a small wedding and you're, this is your church, why not just do it on a Sunday? And then I, it got weird and people started arguing. <laughs> and I realized it was a skit. <laughs> so I was like, oh. That did not happen in the Lutheran church. That was not a thing. Um, but we came back a second time. And then that second time, the church, 
the, the front, the, the stage at uh, Waterloo there was full of young people, full of, I'm guessing there were probably senior youth at the time, and the stage was packed. And they were, they were going on a mission or they were doing some sort of mission thing. And I was hooked because my three-year-old is there. I'm like, I said to my husband, this is, I, this is the experience. I want my our son to have. And we were done, that was it. Oof, drove across town from the Lutheran Church and parked ourselves at WOB. <laughs> and we haven't left. And we haven't left. And it was then, I, I helped out in Sunday school because that's what you do when you have the young kids, um, right? And you get involved and you do the stuff. I, I was involved with Barnabas in the early earlier days, um, doing a bunch of stuff with them. I got involved with offering counting. Just I just got my fingers in the doing of stuff, and it was through that that I guess I got somebody's attention, and they recommended me for the leadership board. And I went, "That's a what now? <laughs> a, a what? A who what?" So I didn't know what a leadership board was, what it did. I was working at BlackBerry at the time in uh, HR technology. This was nowhere on my radar, um, but I was asked. So I explored it a bit and um, I thought, okay, God, if this is, I, and, and my whole posture has been, God, if this is what you want for me, I'll die. I'm here to serve. I, and I just, I don't know what it means, but if this is where you want me, just, I'll check it out. So I did. And that was um, five years ago. So I've been on the board. This is my fifth year um, with the board, just so you're aware. So there's kind of this initial three-year commitment they would like you to make. Um, and then you can serve up to six years in total. So there's a regular, um, New blood. <laughs> um, after you've been off the board for a year, you can come back. So we have had some people that have left and come back. Um, so I explored that, and it was discerned by the discernment committee, who I think some of, I know for sure some of the in this room have been on. Um, and it was I was discerned at the time. Uh, they I was asked to join the board, and I, I, I hesitantly as we often do these things, I hesitantly said yes. Not really knowing, not really understanding, not knowing why God would put me in this place at this time. I didn't feel equipped. I didn't feel ready. I didn't feel uh, spiritual enough. I didn't know what I was supposed to feel. But I, I just took that step because I felt like I was, that God was asking me to. And I needed to trust him. This was a test. And it was interesting because a, a, a year or two earlier, he had asked me to do something else. I left my job at Blackberry. This was, it was so dramatic. I, again, a story for another time is to be put it. I left my job at Blackberry willingly because <laughs> at that time, a lot of people were leaving because they were being asked to. But I left, and I um, I now run a, a, a small charity that um, a former youth pastor at WB have gotten me involved in. So I'm, I've got rid of my corporate career. I'm working in a charity, a Christian charity, and now I'm being asked to do this. It was a lot of change in a short period of time. Hmm. At the same time, my son was moving out. Like there was a lot of decisions in a short period of time. That's bah, bah, God, I'm not ready. I'm not ready. But he knew, he knew, he knew, and he still asked me. So the board. What the heck? What is a board? Why are we here? So in 2004, WMB was incorporated as a corporate entity, an Ontario corporation, and that is so that um, we can give tax receipts, right? Those kind of things. That's one of the reasons. There's lots of reasons for a, an organization to incorporate, but in 2004, the membership decided, the organization, the, the church decided to become a, a corporate entity. Now, I wanna specify, God first, 
This is Jesus' church, but we have a corporation number, which allows the church to be able to, you know, there's tax implications, there's, we can give charitable receipts, uh, just all of these kind of things. But what that did is it enforced a structure. So in every incorporated entity, some of you will know this, you have to have a board of directors. In a charity setting, such as a church, there are unpaid positions. You can't have paid directors, unless there's, there's extenuating circumstances. But this is a volunteer-run board. Unlike a place like Blackberry, those directors are all paid and paid well. <laughs> I would assume. <laughs> I make a little bit less on the board. <laughs> but essentially, we have the same fiscal and judiciary responsibilities. So a lot of them is, is making sure we're aligned with government rules, uh, government policies. Uh, you'll hear some about that. At the, we hear about that at every AGM, which we have to have general meetings of the membership. It's all this complicated stuff. But we try really hard for this to be God first. We pray numerous times at every board meeting. Um, we talk about the church. We don't just talk about finances. We talk about everything. In some ways, and we're, we're, we're battling back, not battling, it's certainly not a battle. We're having conversations, how does the word elder fit into this? We're called a leadership board, but in a lot of churches it's called an elder board, right? So we're also seen as elders as being spiritual leaders of the church, which gives me the heaps, because I don't feel like I'm in a position to lead anyone spiritually. I, I, like I said, I'm still growing. I am definitely a work in progress. But that's essentially the structure of the board. It's why we have, I mean, it's good to have meetings anyway. We've been, and again, as part of this communications committee and talking more often, we're having these family meetings, these things you've seen, right? We just had one, and then we had one back in the fall. Um, we're learning <laughs> how, to, how to have those better. We're, we're learning how to listen because I'm a member and I'm representing you, right? We're part of, we're, we're just all part of the same family, but there just has to be a handful of us that do this certain work. So that's that's kind of the, the we sit down every month, once a month, with, as, a, as a team with, with Sean and Jeff. Uh, we talk about, we celebrate what's happening in the church. We talk about upcoming baptisms. We talk about uh, new member celebrations. We talk about, we do talk about, you know, it's one of those things we don't numbers is a weird thing because it it's when you talk about church it's about quality over quantity <laughs> but we do talk about how many people are attending right we watch how many people are watching online now you don't know that that's not exact science in any way but you're gonna get a decent guess of how many people are still watching online um, because we really were engaged, we want people to be engaged, we want people to come back on Sundays and be together. Um, there is a time and place for online for sure, but anyway, we talk about all of these things at the board table. Um, we just had some uh, recent staff changes, which I know you're aware of. We, we talked about those things at the board table. We talk about this, the, that structure, and so, um, it's a confidential um, uh, platform that we talk about those things in. But it's all for the love of this church. And, and um, most importantly, we talk about strategy. Know that right now, the, the current wording we're using for strategy is uh, know the truth, be the church, love the least. So, and there's a whole strategy that falls underneath that. And it guides, that strategy is what guides activity. So we don't, we, when, when um, the staff team is looking at activities and things to be engaged in, it has to align with strategy because the board's role goes beyond who our lead pastors are. It doesn't matter if it's Jeff or if it's Sean or if it's Adam or if it was Chris before that or if it was Paul Mack before that. It doesn't matter who the lead pastor is because this church has longer 
longer longevity than that, right? So we think how long this church has been running, right? It's, is it 80 years? Almost 100. Almost 100. Almost 100. So the, the longevity of this church has long outlasted any lead pastor or lead pastors that might have been here. So the board is concerned about the long-term health and life of this church. And that includes all of you. It includes any, like anybody now in their 30s, anybody now in their 20s, and any children. I know there was a family celebration uh, on Sunday in Waterloo, uh, a young family that's they've dedicated their kids. All that matters. So that's kind of the, that's the high level, idea of the board. I know some of you, I, I'd love to hear, now I know Bart, I don't know if anybody else in the room has been on the WMB board, other than Barbara. How, but did I nail it? Yeah. 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 Anything you would add? No, I think you've got it pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to disappoint those who came before. <laughs> um, so yeah, so we on the board we have different committees, and this is where it kind of gets exciting too. And um, I would encourage everyone in this room, if anything I'm talking about today gives you any kind of, ooh, that's kind of cool, please get involved. <coughs> Again, I said the same thing to the young adults, like they're 19, but I said if any of this stuff, hey, I'm curious about that, please let us know. So we have different committees. Finance is an obvious one we have to have. Uh, membership committee is another one that we have to have. We have a communications, we're calling it a team now, communications team. Um, uh, a lead pastor advisory team. So there's, a, there's three of us that sit down on a more regular basis with, with Jeff and Sean and just talk about, uh, make sure they're okay, you know, we're just, kind of being a little bit more tight with them. Um, board development, that's kind of a cool one. So board development, part of the board development work, okay, I think it's cool, but bylaws. <laughs> <laughs> bylaws are the least cool thing, but I kind of think they're cool. Um, it's the, that whole structure of how we work as, as a corporation but it's also developing the board. So how do we get better? Often in the years past, we've read books together. We do retreats together. We had a retreat here three weeks ago and we had Mike speak at it, Mike Burgess, and we, we walked, because a lot of us are Waterloo, not all of us are Kitchener. We walked around. Um, we ended up in the community. We interacted with people in the local community that we might not have otherwise interacted with. It's, it's a bonding thing. We played a game together. We, anyway, board development is kind of in charge of that, is, is getting us involved in, in church stuff. You'll see a number of us at the barbecues that are coming up. Uh, we just, we're just you. We are. You're prettier than me, but we're just, we're the same person. Um, Oh Lord, it's hard to be humble. <laughs> <laughs> it's, I, I know, it's, it's a work in progress here. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you're pretty. Yes, you're pretty. Um, but yes, this role, I'm going to actually go there. So yes, I'm so glad you spoke on humility today because that's truly what this is. I, none of us are worthy to be in this role. But God's just asked us for it to be in this time, in this season, in this place, to do what he's asked us to do. And it's, it's not easy. It isn't. It's, I feel the weight of it sometimes, but it's also a blessing. I've met incredible people in a way that I wouldn't have met them otherwise. Hmm. Um, I have, if I can stick it out, I've got one more year on the board. Um, and then I'll be taking my break too. And that's okay, because there's lots of other ways to, to serve God. Yeah. Anyway, I'm blabbing a lot. That's a lot of blabbing. Does, do you guys have questions about, hi. Okay. I, have a, I have a question about 
taking the service, the online. Oh. It was wonderful when COVID was going on and we really enjoyed that. But now I find the church so dark. Yes. And we attended a Kitchener site last week and it was so bright. I know. It was just, how long are you gonna keep, are we gonna keep on doing that? And this is an operational decision. This isn't a board decision. And I should distinguish too, the board doesn't get involved in the day to day. So if the board's involved in strategy, it's up to staff to execute on that strategy. So we don't, we don't, we don't get our fingers in there. Um, we don't want to muddy the waters, but I will answer that question to say that has come up numerous times. And it is well known by our leadership. They, they're very much aware of that. I, I see the same thing. I, I will purposely come to Kitchener because it's just that different atmosphere, right? Even visually with the light. So it's known. So they're working on the technology to be able to still be able to live stream and have, and have the lighting work, but have the blinds open. So it is known. But I will pass along that I've heard the question yet again. <laughs> so, so you said the board doesn't decide who, who would make that decision. That's leadership. So it's it's staff. staff. So Jeff and Sean and the tech and yeah, because there's a lot of technology involved in that too. So, so who exactly would you email regarding something like that? Uh, you can even if you just email office at WMB, okay. it'll get distributed yeah. to the right person. Yeah, when when in doubt, email office yeah. because they yeah the, that'll get rather than yeah we do have um, there is a gentleman that does look after technology and um, and that kind of stuff but yeah if you were only incorporated in two thousand and four you must have been given receipts it's fifty six years old now the church how were you giving receipts before that I don't know. It wasn't a new government policy that came in at that point in time? So I Probably. Yeah. yeah, but yeah, I'm not sure. I didn't hear it. It could be, it's so the government policy rule changes. Uh, thank you. Incorporation, incorporation and charitable organization structures are different. Yes. So you would you could be a you could True. Be a charitable Actually, you're right. You're absolutely right. You can, you don't have to be incorporated. Right. No. Right, you're absolutely right. Yeah. You're right, you're right, you're right. So there were other reasons back in 2004 that the church would have chosen to incorporate. Yeah. Probably had to do with land or tax exemptions. Liabilities. Yeah. Pardon? Liabilities. Liabilities, yes. Yes, so there's protections built in when you're incorporated. True, 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 true. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Is there such a thing as an organization chart? Like who reports to who, or who are on various committees? And that kind of thing? Yeah, so, um, so the committees is part of the board. So the board, we don't have an org chart of the board. There's actually, can you give me a flavor? Can you bring up the WB website and the leadership, and the leadership and we'll talk about leadership or who, who's on it? Um, so we don't have an org, like other than, so there's, like I'm the chair, Chad Rose is vice chair, and Joan Blackwood is secretary. We're, because an incorporated entity has to have those positions. So, but other than that, we don't have, we don't, it's just the 13 of us that kind of hang out together. For the, for the staff, yes, there is. Um, it's, thank you. Uh, essentially the way it, it's, it's, <laughs> yes, <laughs> there is, but it's also blended. Um, and especially now as there's been a change in leadership in the last few weeks with a couple of our, our senior leadership leaving, um, that shifted things a little bit. But it's a real collaborative staff model as well. But yes, there are, so Anita is our Director of Finance and Operations. Um, she has a number of people reporting into her. Um, she herself reports to Jeff. So yes, there is a staff, a, a staff. It, it's a little bit, um, a gen a, a, 
age-related, generally reports to Sean, but it's fluid where they can also go to Jeff, like they visit hard lines. Would you say that's accurate? Yeah. So Joan, for those of you who go to Kitchener, will very much know Joan. She's your social butterfly at the Kitchener site from what I've experienced. Um, Colin, um, well, he attends both sites. I have, I have seen him here in Kitchener. His wife and, and kids attend. Paulin is currently working in Africa for Mita. Um, so he hasn't been present in this for a little bit. Doug Dedman is here from the Kitchener site. He's been here forever and a day. Love Doug. I just, my daughter just saw, calls him the tall bald guy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> just, just so you know, he was in the young adult group when I was a youth pastor ah! here. <laughs> ah! He's been here forever today, which means you've been here for forever and 40. Yes. Got it. <laughs> um, Lynette and her husband Richard attend at Waterloo. Uh, J.K. Hashida has um, been with us a couple of times. He's just, in the last four or five years, been back from BC. He was also a BC guy for a while. Um, generally at Waterloo. Uh, Darcy and Suzanne, their kids generally attend Waterloo, but come to Kitchener for events and things. Uh, that's me. We'll just skip her. Uh, Lori and her husband Len attend at Waterloo as well. Uh, she's and she, yes, uh, we try to kind of go back and forth. Um, Ebenezer generally attends Kitchener with his kids. Anybody from Kitchener will know Ebenezer too. He's always anytime I'm here, he's always on tech. He just hmm. loves the tech. Uh, Chad and his wife and kids are generally Waterloo, but do obviously still attend here on occasion. Uh, Chad and I are like, we're right hands with Vice Chair. We talk all the time. He's a good dude. Robert Chu, again, been around forever in two days. <laughs> right? Most people know Robert. Attends Kitchener now. He used to be at Waterloo. Steven Spendler uh, generally attends Waterloo, will attend Kitchener. And Carlos Vidal, um generally attends Waterloo, does come to Kitchener. He's uh, a wonderful resource in our Spanish community. So that's us right now. Uh, that, that often changes in September, uh, or October, sorry, EHEM, as people's terms <coughs> end and, and things like that. Uh, so yeah, just wanted to give you that visual because we don't always know. I didn't know, before I joined the leadership board, I didn't know A, what it was, B, why it mattered, or see who was on it. I knew nothing. I knew nothing. So this is part of the thing I want you guys to know that we exist. You can contact us uh, through email if you're on email at leadership board at WMB Church. There's uh, the link is on the web page. But um, you can always reach out to Gareth or to Adam or to anybody on staff if you want to say, "How? Who was that girl?" That was here, that wouldn't stop talking. Who was here? Can I talk to her? <laughs> How do I get older? Um, and they'll, they'll send it to me. Any other questions? Yes. This one, uh, when we came here, there was a 10 year plan. Does that yes. plan still in, in effect with the changes? Yes, yes, the 10 year disciple you're talking yes. about. Yes. So the 10 year disciple, a great resource. There was a lot of people and a lot of, there was a great plan that went with that. So the no be love um, simplified strategy takes a lot of those components from the tenure disciple. So it's not gone, it's still there, but the material now, because we have different leadership, the materials, um, so we're not actively using the material, but they're developing new, new lines. So instead of calling it tenure disciple, because that can get confusing too, you feel like you need to be somewhere in 10 years that you weren't 10 years ago. Um, but it's the whole, how do I read this? Um, spirit, spiritual growth and development is really what the tenure disciple is meant to be. So how are, how are people feel? how are they moving along their path their, their, that Jesus has set out for them? So, um, yes, a lot of the components, a lot of the strategy, the detail that's behind No Be Love comes from that original 10 year disciple plan. Good question. Anybody else? You said that um, there's people that um, look out for the lead pastors. Yes. Now that we have instituted. Yes. Does someone look out for our pastors? Sure. We 
all do. <laughs> yeah, so I, I would say the, the primary way that functions is that I meet with Jeff very regularly, okay. right, as, as, as the co-lead that I report to, but I also meet with Jeff and Michelle, and so they take and, and they do that for the rest of our staff too, right? Like, so one of the, one of the big roles of the co-leads is to pastor your pastors, right? And, and the role of the LPAC or the lead pastor advisory committee um, is a function of the board to care for our lead pastors, just recognizing that all of us need someone that's checking in, that's, uh, you know, coming alongside and, and caring for us. And so they hold that role for the lead pastors, but. You don't want to get burned out. No, I'm good. <laughs> no, 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 not happening. But great question, and I don't want to speak for the three staff members that are in the room, but there's been a real emphasis and a real, um, a lot of talk about staff culture, um, about how are we, how is the staff being brought in, how is there open communication. Each leader in a church, or leaders in this case, brings with them their own culture. I've been reading a lot about culture. When you're in a marriage, that's, that creates its own culture. You're in a culture with that person. If you can get into your own rhythms, your own way of doing things. Like, very simplified, my husband and I have a culture of he takes out the garbage and I clean the bathroom. Right, like, there's those, there's those things that just develop, right? So when you have a new lead pastor, lead pastors in this case of a church, and you have some staff changes like we just saw recently, it, it, it creates a different culture because you've got different people at the table, right? You can't help but have different culture when you have different personalities. So but there's been a real emphasis. Um, Anita, I know last year there was a staff culture survey. Um, it was optional, but the staff was given an opportunity to speak into, you know, how, how is life in the church? How are you doing? Um, and I think there's been a real, I hope I'm not over speaking. Would you say there's been emphasis on, emphasis on culture? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So we know that as a board. So we don't directly oversee the staff. We're not meeting weekly with Adam. But we know that those things are happening behind the scenes. Anybody want to join a committee? <laughs> <laughs> Who's excited about communication? <laughs> Who wants to help me do the AGM? <laughs> no pressure. Anyway, I just wanted to be here today to interact with you. We're a church family. Let's do the family thing as much as I'm just going to shove a, shove a bun in my sleeve and i got to get out of here. I, I'm here with you. I'm here with you for the morning. And uh, I, I just really, really thank you for the opportunity to, uh, to chat, to reconnect. Uh, and like I said, yeah, any other questions, you, you can find me, us. Okay? Thank you. Thank you.